Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at how changing the concentration, temperature and surface area affects the rate of reaction. There are two practicals you need to be able to remember, the first one being reacting marble chip and acid. Okay, the first thing you need to be able to do this experiment is to get yourself a measuring cylinder, I've gone with 100ml full of water, a tub of water, a delivery tube which is going to go into your conical flask, a spatula so you can measure out your marble chips, I've gone with a small size, 50 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid. So once you've got all that equipment, the next thing to do is to set the apparatus up. Okay, you can see now I've got the apparatus set up, so I've inverted my measuring cylinder. This way I'm going to be able to measure the volume of carbon dioxide produced when I react my marble chip, calcium carbonate, with my hydrochloric acid. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my marble chip and I'm going to put it into my conical flask. I'm going to have a stopwatch ready, and the second I tip in my acid, I'm going to start the stopwatch and time how long it takes to produce 50 ml of gas. So you can see the carbon dioxide being produced. Now I've started my stopwatch, I'm going to time how long it takes to produce 50 ml. And that took about 12 seconds. Now the basis of all of these experiments is exactly the same. You want to have 50 ml of your acid, you want to have 5 grams of your marble chips. That's what I've chosen to, to keep the same. As long as you keep that the same, you can then change all the other factors, which are the concentration, the temperature, and the surface area. What I'll do now is I'll go through what results you would expect. The first one we're going to look at then is how changing the concentration affects the rate of reaction. So in this experiment that you can see here, all I've done is I've kept the volume at 50 centimetres cubed, I've kept the mass of marble chips at 5 grams, all I've done is I've changed the concentration of my hydrochloric acid. The one on the left you can see is a high concentration, the one on the right is a low concentration. Now as you can see, on the left, which is now just finished, that's gone a lot quicker. So the higher the concentration, the faster the rate of reaction. On the right it's going a lot slower, so if I speed that up you'll see how long it takes, which is 51 seconds. So how can you increase the rate of reaction? Increase the concentration of the acid. If we then move on to temperature, so again I've kept everything the same here, I've got 50 centimetres cubed of my acid, 5 grams of my marble chip, the surface area is the same, all I've done is I've increased the temperature. On the right the temperature is 45 degrees and on the left the temperature is 25 degrees and as you can see nice and simply the higher the temperature the faster the rate of reaction because the quicker I've produced my 50 centimeters cubed of gas. The final one for this practical then is surface area. So to increase the surface area nice and simply you want to take the tablet the marble chips you want to crush them up into a powder. So I've kept the mass the concentration, the temperature and the volume of everything the same here. The only thing that I've changed is the surface area. On the right I've crushed it up into a powder, on the left I've used small marble chips which has got a lower surface area. Nice and simply as you can see the one with the larger surface area increases the rate of reaction. So in summary then, for any of these reactions measure out 50 centimeters cubed of your acid. You don't have to choose 50 centimetres cubed, but just keep that volume the same every single time. Once you've done that, measure out 5 grams of your marble chip. Make sure again that's 5 grams every time. When you're changing the concentration, you change the concentration of the acid. Everything else stays the same. When you're changing the temperature, that's the only thing that changes. The concentration and the surface area stay the same, as well as the volumes, the masses. And then when you're changing the surface area, everything else stays the same. If you can remember that, put it down on paper, that's going to get you a lot of marks in the exam. Right, on to the second practical you need to know. So this one is looking at how the disappearing cross can show you the effect of concentration and temperature on rates of reaction. The second part of the core practical then is you need to have a look at the effect of either temperature or concentration on the disappearing cross. Now to do that, you need two chemicals, 
sodium thiosulfate, of which I need 50 mil. So I'm going to measure that out into my measuring cylinder. So I've got 50 mil of my sodium thiosulfate, and then you want 5 mil of your hydrochloric acid. here. Once you've got those together, you need to get yourself a white tile and put a cross on it, just using a marker pen. Once you've got all that measured out, get yourself a conical flask, put it onto your cross. Add in your sodium thiosulfate. Get your stopwatch ready and add your hydrochloric acid in. What you're going to be doing is you're going to time how long it takes for the cross to disappear. So when you look directly down from above, the solution will start to go cloudy and the cross will disappear. Once it's disappeared, you stop the stopwatch. And then what you can do is you can change the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate or you can change the temperature of the sodium thiosulfate. By doing that, you'll see the effect of each. What we'll move on to now is I'll show you the results of that experiment. Once again, if we start off looking at how concentration affects the reaction, you should realize that from the first experiment, if you increase the concentration, the rate of reaction goes up. So here I've kept all the volumes the same. I've got 50 centimeters cubed of sodium thiosulfate. I've got five centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid. All I've done is change the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate. The left one here has the higher concentration and the right one has the lower concentration. Now, if I speed this up, you'll be able to see which one reacts fastest and it's fairly obvious that the one with the higher concentration has reacted fastest because the cross has disappeared. And then the final one, let's have a look at temperature again and see how that affects the disappearing cross. Again, you should be able to predict now that if you increase the temperature it should react quicker, therefore the cross will disappear quicker. On the left we have 45 degrees and on the right we have 25 degrees and as you can see it is reacting quicker on the left. So again, in summary, take 50 centimeters cubed of your sodium thiosulfate. Take five centimeters cubed of your hydrochloric acid. Put a cross on a white tile, put the conical flask over it, react the two chemicals together and time how long it takes for that cross to disappear. To change the variables, you keep everything the same except for the concentration, or you keep everything the same except for the temperature. By changing those, you can measure the effect of either variable on the rate of reaction. That's pretty much it for this video. Let's have a look at some questions to see what the examiner can ask you. Okay, question one I'd like you to have a look at then. It says, when marble chip calcium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid, a salt is produced as well as water and carbon dioxide. Write a word equation naming the salt produced in the reaction above. So this is your naming salts part. I will put a link in the top right hand corner if you can't remember that. Calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid, what salt is it going to produce? So think, what's the name of my metal in there? Hydrochloric acid, what's my salt ending? Is it a chloride, a nitrate, or a sulfate? Use that to write your word equation. You'll get one mark for the name in the salt and one mark for the rest of the word equation being correct. Question two, Lisa investigated the reaction between small pieces of marble chip and different temperatures of hydrochloric acid. She reacted the two together and measured the amount of gas produced every 30 seconds until there was no further reaction. Part A, what is the independent variable in this reaction? That is the thing that you change. Part B, what is the dependent variable in this reaction? That is the thing you measure. Part C, state two control variables, two things that you keep the same. And part D, describe how Lisa could modify her reaction to investigate the effect of concentration instead of temperature. That's worth two marks, so you need two things in there. Question three, describe the effect of increasing temperature, surface area, and concentration on the rate of reaction. It's only worth one mark, so nice and simply, what does it do to that rate of reaction? And then four, Bert suggested using a light gate to measure when the cross had disappeared in the second experiment. Explain why this would be an improvement on using your eyes. Now, if you haven't come across a light gate before, they are things that measure the intensity of light coming through. So think, how could that be useful in the experiment we've just looked at? Pause the video, have a go, and we'll see how you've done in a minute. Okay, let's have a look then. So marble chip is my calcium carbonate, so I'm starting off with that. And I'm reacting it with hydrochloric acid. 
I know that I'm going to get water, and I know that I'm going to get carbon dioxide, and I know that because the question tells me it. So the next thing is naming the salt. So the first thing you do is you take the name of the metal, which in this case is calcium, and then you have a look at your acid. It's hydrochloric acid, therefore I have a chloride. So you get one mark for your calcium chloride being correct, and then one mark for everything else being correct. If we move on to question two then, what is the independent variable in this reaction? Nice and simply, the thing that you changed, which is the temperature. What is the dependent variable? So that's the thing we've measured, and that is the amount of gas produced every 30 seconds. And two control variables. There are quite a few you could look at here. First one being, make sure the concentration is the same, make sure the surface area is the same. You could also talk about the volume of the acid, or the mass of the marble chip, making sure they're all kept the same. Any two of those would have got you two marks. And then finally, describe how Lisa could modify her reaction to investigate the effect of concentration instead of temperature. Well, the first thing is, keep the temperature the same, and therefore you change the concentration. I would have accepted different named concentrations, 1 molar, 0.1 molar, etc. If we move on to question 3 then, it says, describe the effect of increasing temperature, surface area, and concentration on the rate of reaction. Nice and simply, if you increase any of those three, the rate of reaction will increase. So you could have said, speeds up the reaction, time decreases, or the rate increases. Any of those would have got you your mark there. Four, Bert suggests using a light gate to measure when the cross had disappeared in the second experiment. Explain why this would be an improvement on using your eyes. So nice and simply, a light gate you can stop it at the same time, so it will stop at the same light intensity at the same point in every experiment. Therefore, what you're going to do is reduce human error. So those are the two things that you could have put to get the two marks there. That's pretty much it for this video. I've got three review questions for you. Hopefully this will sum up everything you've learnt in this video. First one being describe an experiment to show how increasing the concentration of hydrochloric acid affects the rates of reaction between marble chip and hydrochloric acid. So again, that's the first reaction that we did today. What would we do? What concentrations could we use? What do we keep the same? Question two, describe an experiment to show how increasing the temperature of sodium thiosulfate affects the speed that the cross disappears when added to hydrochloric acid. So again, what do we keep the same? 50 centimeters cubed of sodium thiosulfate, five centimeters cubed of my hydrochloric acid. What do we change? The temperature. What temperatures could I use? Make them up. And then question three, finally, describe how to increase the surface area of an ingestion tablet and explain an investigation to see how increasing the surface area affects the rate of reaction between an indigestion tablet and hydrochloric acid. Have a go at each of those four, and that brings this video to an end. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, click on like down below. You can have a look at my latest video, you can visit the website, and you can also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Bye now.